And we welcome you to Munzing Media's production of Moose Basketball, as we'll be here for non-league doubleheader tonight as the University of Maine press Isle will be in the house for a women's and men's doubleheader. Hello, buddy. I'm Rob Munzing, joined by Nate Munzing, Brittany Bourgeois Munzing, running our camera here from the Augusta Civic Center. Lumpy comes in, as we said, at 0-4, a non-league game. They're coached by Doug Carter. The Moose are coached, of course, by Jennifer Laney. She's in her sixth season. Laurie Fricker, Corey Harris. Churchill's got all four points. Toth with it now. Darby coming off an award-filled week for her. We'll get to that when we get some time to talk about it. Nice, tough drive by Caitlin LaFountain, and she's got it home, and she's got some harm. She'll go the free-throw line. Yeah, really great take there by LaFountain. Hard to the basket, had a great angle, two steps, foul and finish. Nice job there and good focus at the end. I end up, so it'll stay for two. Holtham got it off, and here come the Owls. Owls struggled early on here in the season, but they're off to a good start here tonight. Boyce with it out front, gets a pick high. Boyce thinks about the three, launches it, but it'll be shot. It'll come back here to the Moose of the University of Maine. Remember, if you're just joining us here for the first time for the women's NCAA basketball, four quarters of ten minutes each. And Cod's got it, got it down inside to LaFountain. So Caitlin off to a good, strong start. We saw Caitlin have a monster game last week in the game that we did last Tuesday. Now that was a sweep for the women and men here with the Moose. For nine again. We're tied at four. Boyce with it now. Holly Boyce out of Stonington. Holes out front. Looks for a cutter. She gets a cutter coming down. Holtham goes to the basket, puts it out. It's going to get a rebound. Nice fake on Plummer and home. Nice finish that time by Amanda Holtham. Yeah, Holtham with a nice smart play there with the up fake on the other side of the basket. One dribble to the opposite side. Able to get Plummer up in the air for an easy putback there. Common Bright got shut off. Got it to Cod. Cod holes. Elbow for Plummer. Straight down. Number three, Jamie Plummer. Well, they stopped her from going to the hole, but Jamie's got more than that in her game, and you saw it right there. Owls ball out. They've got 20 on the shot clock. Comes out high. Boy's going to get it to the left side. This is Churchill. No. Plummer with a board. Bragg get it way out high. That won't go. Nice save inside. LaFountain's got it now. She makes room for herself, goes up, gets fouled, and you can see that she's a magnet for fouls because she goes to the hoop hard, and that'll draw fouls. Yeah, how good you're missing that one. Darby was a complete step out of bounds. Yeah, I thought so. And she went up and got that. But, hey, officials are people as well, right? They make mistakes. Try to break the 6-6 tie. Oh, Caitlin LaFountain. Caitlin's been short on her free throws. Cod got it, got it knocked out. It'll stay white basketball. Toth got it in. They'll swing it around, and they'll see if they can't get Dobby for a three. She comes back out high. Plummer in the corner. She's going to rim it. She's going to follow, and she's going to kiss it off the glass and home. Number three, Jamie Plummer. 
The old adage, they say, follow your shot. Boyce with it now out front. Harley Boyce. Alton goes on Plummer. Plummer cut her off. and That only looked funny, I guess. Holtham. Yeah, I mean, she went up uh, to sh make the shot there, shoot, initially. <laughs> got it knocked away. Yeah, and came right to her on the tip. And she did a smart play by not trying to grab it while it was in the air. She let it bounce back down, collected it, and then <laughs> just put the shot right back up. The dish inside comes to Jamie. Jamie got cut off, tries to get it outside. It's deflected away and into the hands of Holtham, and she got it off, and here they come, the Owls. Boy's got a left side. This is Patno. She's going to go. No. Rebound on the offensive end. Alton got it back outside to Churchill. Churchill's going to pull it out, give it back to Boyce, and they'll go to work to set it up. They'll be doing a nice job offensively right now. The fountain with the rebound. Top, I mean, Bragg with it. Plummer got cut off and stolen away. They're being very ferocious inside. We've got bodies down. Good job on the rebound by Sidney Churchill. Yeah, you saw that, Rob, on that last possession. Once Jamie got the ball, the entire defense collapsed down into yeah. the paint. She didn't really have any much, very much she could do with that ball. I think uh, moving forward here, UMA has spread the floor a little bit. Be a little bit more patient, and they'll be able to get some lanes uh, to penetrate down inside the box. The fountain's got it. Bragg comes common. Going to dish. Dobby back to Bragg. Bragg's had a little pop. Rolls it off. No good. Nice job rebounding again. That's Patnell with it. The Owls have done a good job inside. Not sure. We'll try to find some time to take a look. The Owls, as we said, 0-4. Oh, we'll see who they play. They look like they're a pretty good matchup here. And the Fountain's got it on the steal. Toth. Dobby looks to penetrate, but got cut off. She'll get it back outside. She thought about the three. Bragg dishes. Nice touch pass inside to LaFountain. She cashes it home. Nice assist. Well, Plummer just a complete player there, understanding the breakdown, any kind of zone. you got to work some form of a triangle. There she gets the ball at the baseline and instantly goes right down to the box and gives LaFountain an easy lay in there for two points. Coming off the pick and drilling it home with Sidney Churchill on a nice shot by Sidney. She came off the high screen and popped it home. 10-10, been a good one here underway when the first quarter they get it inside. Jamie had to get it back outside. They'll rotate the ball. Got holds. Pass came in. Tough one to handle, and Plummer can't keep it in. It'll be our old basketball. It's really kind of a, it's a 2-3 zone, but it's really condensed down there, taking away Plummer down underneath. The only scoring opportunities other than following her shot and getting that put back have been from the outside, so... Right now, they're doing a pretty good job uh, in that 2-3 zone. Look to see UMA spread it out and get Bragg and, uh, and uh, Toth involved here in some three-pointers, which will really expand that zone out. Toth hasn't been able to get unwound for the threes. Boy, she had threes last week. Got play with the week. We'll talk a little bit about that. we get a break in the action. 10-10. Good harassment on the inbound here by the Moose. Good head and shoulder fake. Good battle going on inside. Lindsey Clark did a good job defensively. Dobby comes. Behind her back she goes. Clark. Bragg's going to launch a three. Inside was Caitlin LaFountain. She got it back outside. and Instant offense coming in the game. Number four, Lindsey Clark. That's what you like to see. and That's what Clark gives you off the bench. She sure does. She's uh, She really is an impactful player, especially off the bench. She puts in a lot of minutes, as they all do here, only carrying seven seven people on the team. So uh, for her to come in off the bench and score points is huge, and she always does. She's a great shot from the baseline, as we just saw there. Uh, she can step out and hit that mid-range jumper. She's got it again. They'll come right out on the perimeter shooters because they know Dobby's been lighting up the league on threes. There's a little cut inside, back outside, a little inside, outside game. Good movement here. Caitlin head and shoulder face. She's got a path to it. She's going to go up, pop a baseline and home. Number 21, Caitlin LaFontaine. 
Ella found a nice job with the up fake. The defense a little bit slow to rotate that time, only having two defenders. She, she was able to get the up fake, get the first one up in the air, dribble, and then get shot up over the second one. Nice job there, LaFountain. Churchill got it back outside. Don't start the rotation here. Alton got it. Now it came inside. We got a push foul. That's only going to be the first foul. Nobody in any foul trouble here is. That's the first foul on the Moose. If you're just following us for the first time this year in the women's NCAA games this year, four quarters, five fouls, and then you shoot two. Thank Coach Laney for bringing us up to speed on the rules. You want to talk about somebody lost in space here to <laughs> start the season we came and saw, saw this setup. And because we, we were still in the middle of doing our uh, football. We started this on, what, November 13th, I think, yeah. was our first game. Our 12th, I think, was our first game, and we were still doing football. So we hadn't really boned up on the, the rule changes. So Coach set us straight. Coach that's up. does a great job and also doing filling the role of athletic director here this year. And then we got a change on the fly. It looked like someone came out in off the bench. Not sure. 14-10 anyway. The Moose lead this one. 137 left here in the first quarter. Clark got cut off. They took the left hand away. Tried to get it inside, but not able to get it inside that time as Emily Carter, number 22 in the game as well. I was outside. Good defense here by the Moose. They're down to six on the shot clock. That'll be wild, so still no iron, and we'll see. Close to shot clock violation. It didn't go. I'm becoming a full court pressure here. Yeah, Coach Doug Carter, he's in his first season there, wants the Owls to get up after it here with one minute left here in the quarter. And more kind of just a man-to-man -man matchup. Yeah. Just had to get out of that zone under a minute here. Nice bounce pass inside to Plummer from the fountain. Caitlin's got great court awareness. And, boy, she and Jamie, as you said last game, they really complement each other un underneath so, so well. Yeah, they're really gelling pretty well right now as an entire team and squad. Uh, I think comparing the the different teams that we've seen the past couple of years, this one has come together a lot sooner, uh, and they're playing extremely well early on here in the season. So it, things of that nature where they're able to find each other on the baseline uh, and kind of know spatially where uh, their teammates are. Falls on Toth, I think. We'll see when it goes up. Yeah, it is her first, team second. So low scoring first quarter. We're seeing some high scoring out of the games that we've done here. Churchill got it in high. 14 on the game clock for the first shot clock off. Pop outside. No good. Rebound underneath and lipping it home on the putback was Janae Libby. And that will do it for one. So we're played one. You see the score is 16 to 12. Moose over the Owls. We'll come back. We'll have the second quarter. You're watching Munson Media's production of Moose Basketball on MunsonMediaSports.com. Junior Trojan football and cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year. I want to thank Michael Mano, who always watches our broadcast. Jeez, we've got a request. He's like our sports information director out there in the uh, Internet land. He sent us the Owls schedule, and as, as expected, they, they played a pretty tough schedule. They played uh, Maine Maritime. Uh, they played uh, down at the Endicott Tournament, down uh, Endicott College, down in Beverly, Massachusetts, where they lost. So they played some tough yeah, schools. Yeah, uh, you're right about that, Rob. Susquehanna University they played, so. Uh, fundamentally sound so far. Yeah, they're sound. Seen, yeah. Uh, Thank you, Michael. That we've seen so far here, Rob. 
Um, doing a really nice job making adjustments defensively, changing in and out of defenses too. You can tell that's a good display of the coaching there. Michael, of course, a big fan besides us of NHTI. That's out of bounds. 9.49, second quarter, just underway. Ball went a ways, and as the officials find out here, you're not only an official, you're going to sometimes <laughs> run this ball down for a while. <laughs> no, no helpers. Bragg with it outside. She irons it up. Jamie got the rebound. Number 22, Emily Carter. Emily Carter with the two for the moose. I'm just really surprised, Rob, early on. No three-pointers in that first quarter for UMA, and they're still cold out from outside right now. With a six-point lead as they're getting some second-chance opportunities and making those count. To come back outside to Boyce. She just missed one. Churchill now is going to make some room for herself. She can make room for herself and get the shot off, as we saw there in the first quarter. This will go out of bounds, and Coach Doug Carter wants a little pressure. But they back off, and they'll be in that half-court zone. They try to force it in the plum. Loose ball comes to Boyce. Yeah, Umpy having a little bit of difficulty on where they were going to set up defensively, and it really caused some yeah. havoc yeah. for UMA, <laughs> having people open and then trying to get them the ball, and then nice steal here by Bragg. Here comes Common, controls it. Number 12. Transition Number basketball 12. off the steal defense. Two for Bragg. 2012, biggest lead is eight so far in this game. Plummer dropped out, came outside, but not before. Katie Patton could get one down. The senior out of Presque Isle. A quick fire for her, too. 20 to 15. Comes the inside. Plummer's got it. Going to rotate around to Bragg. Bragg's going to take. Puts it up. Runner, no. Plum's got the rebound. She went up, and they're going to call hell ball. So possession arrow is going to favor the Owls. So good defense underneath. And they're frustrating Jamie a little bit as they're running bodies at her left and right. Yeah, but UMA is doing a nice job of they're finding the quicker that they can get the ball rotated to the opposite side, it creates kind of a, an open seam, dribble drive. They weren't able to put it there. Pretty good defense and help defense by Umpy to come over and stop that from Carmen. And Carmen kind of playing defense on Jamie a little bit, both going up and going for the rebound and causing some trouble for each other. Churchill again. Half court set. Bray came and got it. Now she's finding a lane. She goes down and gets fouled. Go to the free throw line. So 2017, chance to add to the three-point leads, but up to eight. That's as big as it's been here for the Moose. They led 20 to 12. Second one for Bragg. Yes. 22-17. Moose have played strictly that half-court matchup. Yeah, we've talked to them a little bit early here, Rob, in the beginning of the season that they think they can match up with most teams that they play, and they certainly have so far, usually causing an advantage to them defensively because of how versatile most of their players are that they can get out and play people and cause some trouble underneath too because they're all such good rebounders offensively and defensively. Steal. Toth gives it to Jamie Late. Jamie... Head, shoulder, fake, and home. Well, that's almost un indefensible right there. You just, yeah. <laughs> you, I don't know what you're going to do. You do a good job <laughs> stopping her initially. She she <laughs> rotates out to try and pass the ball away. Yeah. Sees that no one's there. Comes right back in, up fake, up fake, and then she gets a clean shot off. That's tough to defend. Yeah, right, it's Kevin McHale-like. Yeah. <laughs> that's always a good thing for a basketball player to be talked about in the same breath as 
a player like McHale. Late cut. Now it comes back outside. Baseline pop. Rolls out for Catter and it'll be our basketball. 24-17. Seven point lead. Checking back in the game here. For the Owls is Amanda Holfin. She's out of fourth field for your main. Quite a northern Maine contingent, of course, as you would expect at the University of Maine Presque Isle. That makes sense? It does. He's what a good basketball played up in the county. So That's these true. these uh, these kids are playing good high school ball, as we know. Rolls lips out. That was Holtham with it. Second chance opportunity, and she'll nail that one. Will Amanda. Well, these rebounds you saw in there in the offensive possession by Umpy, their long rebounds are getting over the top of UMA <laughs> trying to defensively rebound and causing second chance opportunities for Umpy. Nice job there. Just wanted to get those. Holly Boyce. Toth on her. Give and go. Boyce now got it deflected away. Bragg's got it. Plummer now. Jamie pulls it back out. To look to set the floor, get a set to go. Comes Caitlin with it. Nice play by Caitlin. Oh, can't get it home. Alton with the rebound. Back out to Boyce. Here comes Boyce. Deliberate dribble. Bounce pass right side. Dickerson back out to Boyce. That was stolen away. Toth. Nice. No look pass to Plummer. Plummer under control and home. That was a tough one for Jamie to control. I love it. Darby taking a peek at the elbow to see that she had a teammate trailing. It ended up being Jamie. Nice pass. She dribbled down to the right-hand side to draw the defender and was able to find Jamie and create a pretty good scene for her to be able to score. Double dribble. Got some changes. 4.17 left. We'll have halftime. We'll have a couple of guys heading up here to see us from the men's team as we always like to get a chance to talk to the guys. Noah Thompson. Will be coming up to visit us. Toth with the basket and a steal and a pop and a good. Dabby Dabby Doo. Could have coined that one. I like it, Nate. Yeah, that's a good one. Going to go with it. Trecho, she bangs it home from outside. Going to have Dustin West come up along with Noah. At halftime, we'll talk to them about that big one the men had there last week. What they're up to, where they're headed. Eight-point lead. That was a long one, didn't get down. It's going to go to the Owls. Clark had a look, but couldn't get it. 30-22, 3-19. Not many stoppages of play here. We're no, almost in real time here. Very few fouls here in the second. Only one foul called in the second. Remember, they wipe the fouls at the end of each quarter. And then once you hit five, you're shooting two. Bragg looks for help. Gets it. Plums doubled. So what? Yeah. Fantastic drops that there by Jamie. Having the defender come over the top onto her left side. She knows by feeling where the defender already was while she received the pass. All she has to do is drop step, uh, get an open look at the basket, and she sure did. Nice job there by Jamie. Good entry this time, and a power move draws the foul. We're going to take a look here real quick, just as that sequence of play by Darby here. As she goes in, she's able to get the ball laid in. The inbound pass kind of lazily takes it. <laughs> She's able to steal it. Nice dribble drive and pop for, for two there. Thirty-two twenty-three. <clears throat> Rob Munzing, Nate Munzing, Brittany on I Cam.
Number 15, Amanda Holtham scored two on the line. So Holtham hit them both. Closes the gap a little bit. Moose holding it outside now. Now the penetration, the kick back outside. It comes to Jamie. Jamie goes, stops, and got her on a little step, I think, there. Yeah, I think she wasn't expecting as much contact as she did. She went for the two-foot plant and kind of got her weight distributed wrong and was able to pick up both, both feet. So. Two minutes remaining in the quarter. Two in the quarter. Floater, no. That was Dickinson. Head of the pack. Number 22, Emily Carter. Emily Carter for two. Emily, the Waterville, Maine native, Waterville High School grad. Smooth left handed operator is Emily. Ten point lead now. Good harassing defense as well that time by Emily. Out of bounds. Shot clock at seven. Yeah, UMA does such a good job on their man-to-man -man defense that they don't they don't allow a lot of space at all. No matter where you are, if you get a screen, they'll come off and they'll they'll double up on whoever the screen was set for, or they'll come over. A good job rotating whenever they're playing their man-to-man. -man. Yeah, just very play, fundamental. Yeah, yeah, they're they're playing really good defense right now, especially in this game. Ten point lead. They'll look to increase this. Dropped inside. The fountain. Pop outside. Morgan Card. Morgan Card that time. 36 24. Under a minute left here. Noah Thompson. Dustin West will join us at halftime from the men's team. They're up here already up in the pavilion. We're giving them some oxygen high up here. Head of the pack to Jamie. Jamie, spin move, glass, no. She gets a rebound back. In trouble. Comes out high to Common. She's going to dance at home. Little accidental offense for three for Bragg. 39-24. Count if it goes by Churchill and it rolls off and that will do it. We have played uh, one half of basketball here from the Augusta Civic Center. You see the score. The Moose Ladies 39, the Owls of Presque Isle 24. We remind you, you are watching Munsey Media's production of Moose Basketball on MunseyMediaSports.com. Come back with us at halftime. We'll have some guests and talk it up when we come back. Junior Trojan Football and Cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year. Junior Trojan Football and Cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year. Trojan Football and Cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year.
Vegas. You know, those uh, Madison, Maine guys, they know how to dress for the winter for sure, Dustin. Uh, certainly two new guys to the program here. You guys are really coming off a huge win there, that last game last week. That was a fantastic one. Noah, you, you've had some great success here. You've already been named National Player of the Week, right? Or was that league player? Was it a league owner or something like that for all the threes? Or you broke the school record in the three? I broke the school record, yes. I broke the school record. Uh, it was broke. It hasn't been broken in like 20 years or something like that. And I broke it the other night here at the Augusta Civic Center. So that was pretty cool. Now, sometimes people come in to the Augusta Civic Center and they're throwing the ball all over the place because it's a, it's really a different type of building. And, and you guys don't get to practice here, Dustin. No, we actually have to practice over at the Armory, and it's a lot different. Like, we don't have the backdrop that we have there. The floor is tile, so it's kind of kind of slick, but we make it work as much as we can. And we try to just come out here and play the best game that we can, given the conditions. Well, I know, Dustin, you play tournament games here for the Madison Bulldogs in the tournament because we covered you. Uh, so it's a little more for familiar to you. No, it's a new it's a new deal for you. Noah, what brought you here to the University of Maine in Augusta? Uh, my grandparents they live um they live in Portland. So I have I have some family up here. I wanted to have them watch some games. And then my family back home in Arizona can watch the games too with you guys. So that's awesome too. Um, I don't know I was I was looking it up I guess schools back in Maine and I found the UMA and Brandon Rogers gave me a text and told me to come check it out. So ever since then we've just been I just liked it. I loved it up here. Got you can't say no to Brandon. I can't. Nobody can say no to Brandon, can I mean I mean he's like he's like the music man, you know, he comes into town and he you know, he's selling band instruments and uniforms and the whole work. But he's quite a leader for you, Dustin, isn't he? Oh absolutely. Him and Keith both, they step up whenever we need it and everybody on this team from senior down to freshman, we have great leadership from everybody. Every player is capable of stepping up. Coach Ford sets a great example and I just love the way that we all work together. It's just one unit, we're all cohesive and there's never I've never been closer with a group of guys. Well, fantastic. So anyway, hey, listen, Dustin, you keep this guy warm, okay? Because he got to get warm to launch those threes. Keep shooting them, buddy, okay? We're having fun down here with the guys. So we'll come back. We'll have the second half of the women's game. We come back to Augusta the Civics. And you're watching MonsleyMediaSports.com's production of Moose Basketball. Junior Trojan football and cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising. For allowing us to build this beautiful facility, we raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year.
So we welcome you back and set for second half action, third quarter action here in four quarters of women's basketball. Moose out 39-24, as you see. Rob Munzing, Nate Munzing. Brittany on our camera, Munzing Media. You're going to get called on the travel. Here's Caitlin LaFountain. So we thank uh, Dustin West, Noah Thompson, being with us. We'll have a couple of the women come up during the men's game. It's, that's how we work it. Yeah, one thing, listening to the guys talk a little bit, Rob, is how even we can kind of notice being outsiders in a sense, but still kind of being part of the team, how close the two groups really are. Yes, yeah. Uh, amongst, you know, and that's really what it, any college experience is a matter of, you know, the people that you're surrounded by and your friends are obviously the most impact impactful in, in your career. So to be close to a group of friends and, and guys and girls uh, on both sides here, I think you can really show that they're all enjoying their time right now. Making space for herself as Plummer coming in off the baseline and Came to get herself an angle, and as she did, she got it up, but she got fouled. She'll go and shoot two. Nobody in any foul trouble in, after the first half of action. Fouls were minimal. Jimmy Lips, the first one. She'll get the second of the two coming up. So as we said, Darby Toth received the Yankee Small Conference Play of the Week. On his last Wednesday, she averaged 16 points per game in a 3-1 week for the Moose. Broke the record for three-pointers in the game against the University of Maine at Machias and went 19 from 28 from behind the arc on the week. And she not only that, she gave out 14 assists, had nine steals, so you can see why she was Yankee Small Yankee Conference Play of the Week. Jamie way down, lips new. Comes Boyce for the Owls. Good defense here in the first half and extending into the second half by the Moose, but there's an outside down one by Kylie Alton out of Burnham, Maine. The loop inside. And we get a hole call by Al Cloutier. That's on the floor. It's too bad because it took away probably a scoring opportunity for sure for LaFountain as she was just about to head into the sweet spot. And I couldn't really tell. It looked like that might have been away from the ball. Yeah, I think it was. Tough take, but didn't get down. Second chance opportunity for the Owls. They'll dish it back out to Boyce. She thought about the long range. Three, but didn't go. Allen with it now. Amanda Allen. She's going to dish it over to Dickerson. She's going to roll it out. Dobby goes baseline. Skips it back outside. Quick pass to Plum. She goes in. Spinorama, but didn't get it home. Fight for the rebound. It's going to go off of... Well, they're saying it off blue, but... Unless Jamie Plummer... Put a blue uniform on quickly. <laughs> yeah, we're going to take a quick look at it here. Yeah, jeez, I don't know what that Yeah, <laughs> boy. Race down by Lindsey Clark. And out of bounds. As you can see, moves out in front, 45-26. Carr dishes it back outside. Put up and down, didn't roll in for Carter. Boyce with it now outside. She's the point guard here for the Owls. Amanda Allen. Skipped right side, well outside for Hope. So 
so there's a break. Got, got called for steps. <laughs> She's a little surprised because there's quite a bit of contact yeah. in there. Boy, she said, yeah, I, I, might, I might have taken some steps right after I got hip-checked. <laughs> yeah. I think it's one of those uh, scoreboard calls yeah. right there. You know, 46-26, at... yeah, you're right. Yeah. Mackenzie holds, dishes, some other players now in the game for Coach Doug Carter for the Owls. We've been stuck at 46-26 for a couple of minutes here. Bragg got it left side. Good defense. Owls stolen away. Allen wouldn't go. Card rebound. Bragg now. Come goes to work on Dickerson. Inside. LaFountain makes room. Can't get it home over the top and knocked away. It's going to go off Emily Carter, and she'll track it down, and it'll be Owl basketball. Yeah, in the last two minutes, there haven't even been that many shots. It's no. Been, <laughs> just dribble up and down, dribble up and down. Turnover after turnover here. So, yeah, like you said, you mentioned just a little while ago, a little bit of racket play right now, but defense has really picked up intensity. Toth back in with Plummer in the game for the Moose. That's Wilcox, 23 in the game now. Stolen away. Ball's on the floor. Going to get a hold out front. It's taken a hold with Lindsay Clark, but she got held, so we'll see if they're going to call it on the shots, and they should, says Al Cloutier. First one's out. Comes Amanda Allen. They tried to set a traffic jam up high. Back in the game to launch was Sidney Churchill. Comes Darby, right side. Plummer's got it, long range. Iron follows up again. Darby with the three, rolls it out. This time the rebound comes out to Dickerson and she'll get it off to Churchill who goes to work here. Two minutes for the A little bit of slow play right now, too, if you it kind is. of watch the players at that Thanksgiving uh, Boom. dinner <laughs> weighing <laughs> heavy on everyone. Yeah, well, leave that a stand for the Patriots last night. Oh, they're probably studying, what I would guess. Yeah. Late night studying, uh, getting ready for finals. 47-28. The phone had an idea. What was it? The, was it Caitlin there? I can tell. Yeah, it was Caitlin. Threw it up there at a weird angle and got knocked down. And she go the free. She lives at the free throw line. <clears throat> so speaking of finals and all that, you got a replay coming up here, possibly Nate. Take a look at here. Caitlin working down underneath. Getting after the first free throw. She's gonna get the ball here. Try. <laughs> Try and create any kind yeah. of room or shot off of that. That was a unique uh, shot angle for sure, Rob. I think draws the foul anyway. Yeah, so I had a, one of the students for UMA doing a survey. says, uh, sir, can I ask you a couple of questions for my project? So I consented, and he wanted to know how old I was. I told him 62, and he wanted to know if I use Facebook. I said yes, and he wanted to know how many times a day. And... Uh, he said, uh, gave me some numbers. He said, uh, he kept going. He was, you know, he started out like at one and then two. And then I said, keep going. And, you know, he was up over, he was up to close to about 12 by the time I said, yeah, probably. And he was amazed that somebody my age would be on Facebook. He doesn't know he's talking to. He doesn't know. Yeah. He doesn't know that I go on there and I can't remember from one time to the next time what I've <laughs> seen. So I just keep going back to the same thing. Outside for a three-point basket. So some 
instant offense off the bench, Megan Jellison out of Fort Fairfield. And an answer back for Caitlin LaFountain. 39, uh, 49 31. Just read the scoreboard, Rob. Don't try to get it too technical. Yeah, so I really impressed this guy, that an old fossil like me, be all over Facebook. Should have flashed my Apple Watch at him a little bit, I guess. Yeah, or drop yeah. your Twitter handle on Yeah, I could have. Most people my age are probably appreciative of Facebook and more appreciative it wasn't around the 70s. <laughs> 49 So Boyce is going to get another. Holly Boyce, Stonington, Maine, down east. Plummer's got the rebound. Been a whole hummer basically uh, here tonight. Back outside, it comes to Common. She's going to launch up. Second chance opportunity. They'll fight for it. Comes to Jamie, but. I believe we call the hell ball, so trying to get out of the habit of saying jump ball because uh, th that dates my involvement with the sport when I say jump ball because they don't jump them anymore. Back in the day, they did every time there was a contested. We'll call it, trying to call it hell ball. This is one of my broadcasting goals for the year. And that will do it through three. So you see the score, 49-32. Moose over the Owls. You're watching Moose Basketball on MunsonMediaSports.com. Junior Trojan football and cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year. We're back here at the Augusta Civic Center. I want to let you know that we don't have our normal wired Ethernet here. It wasn't available tonight, so we're on the public Wi-Fi, which is not a good place to live when you're in streaming land. So we know uh, we're getting little dropouts every now and again. So we're going to try to plug in at, I think, between games, see if we can't do that. and. Get a better signal up. Apologize for that. Those of you who are losing the signal. 49-32. True sign here that you amazed Ty. They haven't hit a three-pointer tonight. Right, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's tied legs, isn't it? Yep. Number 23, Morgan Wilcox. So Wilcox on the follow. 49-34. And now here comes that trap you... Referenced. Bragg's got it. I think Jamie might hit a three. They've hit maybe one. I think Jamie hit a three early on, Nate. So possession. Going to the, yeah, going to the owl, says Justin Underwood. Allen on the take. No. Gets a rebound. Looks to dish it back out, and she does. It's Wilcox with it. Dished inside. Step over. Good inspired play this time by the Owls as they continue to play hard, and they'll hustle this one into a possession. So they're playing hard for Coach Doug Carter, athletics director there at the University of Maine Presque Isle, is Mike Holmes. Trisha went, got fouled. So good take there that time by Sidney Churchill out of Fort Fairfield. 
Yeah, I'll be just chipping away here in yeah. the second half so far. You and May kind of been stale, and especially in that third quarter. So. Forty-nine thirty-five. So we'll see if they don't put the trap pressure on, which will give some open shots. Comes over to James. I'm, I'm sorry, that's Carter outside for the left-handed pop from downtown. Didn't go. Clark. I'm sorry. Churchill. Churchill found the cutter. Holtham put it up, but she couldn't get it. Second chance opportunity. Dixon. Holtham hit the three, so we're going to get a timeout by Coach Laney. Leads cut to 11. We'll take the timeout. We'll come back. Finish up the fourth quarter after this. Junior Trojan football and cheering would like to thank Maine Athletic Fundraising for allowing us to build this beautiful facility. We raised $18,000 in our first year with Maine Athletic Fundraising, $28,000 last year, and we hope to top that again this year. We thank our sponsor, Maine Athletic Fundraising, across all the games that we put out in the streaming realm. If you're a high school basketball fan, we'll be posting uh, our winter schedule. We'll con continue to work on that. We'll have a game Friday night from Gardner, Madomac Valley, visiting Gardner Girls. That'll be a 6.30 tip-off. We'll be a 6.20 on the air. Comes inside now to Jamie. Back outside, good ball movement quickly here. Here's the penetration, jump stop, put up and home. So Toth with a nice, nice finish there, and that's nice execution out of Coach Laney's timeout, 51-38. Yeah, well, we were kind of talking off air there, Rob, that Darby and, and Carmen Bragg haven't really shot at all tonight and haven't really taken the ball down to the hoop, just kind of been facilitators out around the perimeter with the ball. So we got to see a little bit more offensive uh, production from the two of them here. As Umpy's starting to work back into it. That was a three-point basket, ten-point game. Holtham with a long-range three. Plum at the free-throw line. She's going to nail it home. So a little more urgency in the game now here for the Moose ladies. Trying to match the tempo set here by the Owls. Churchill out front. She thought about the three, got it off. So Amanda Holtham has been hot. She's got a couple of threes here. She's thinking another one, but they came off her. But Churchill will take that one. Rebound. Holtham's got it. She might have pushed. Yeah, she did. So they caught her on the push. See what that is on her. Just her first. Both teams won foul here in the fourth. Yeah, you get five fouls, and then at that point you're shooting two after the fifth foul. Here comes the pressure. Jamie's got it, and she can't make the pass. Out behind the three-point line. No, won't go. Tipped around. The fountain ahead of the pack, and Toth brings it out. No look pass. Nice Baseline pass, and the fountain found her space underneath. Boy, that was a pretty touch pass that time by Morgan Card. Is she did a nice job of reading the baseline. Caitlin LaFountain. She's had a bushel full of free throws here tonight. Rolls the first one in. Start of the game, a couple of times at the free throw line, a little short, but... She's got them both. Two big ones there. 55-41. Back to a 14-point lead. Just under six minutes left in the fourth. I 
Now this is one of those scenarios, Rob, here. If Umpy's able to get this back to something manageable here in this next five minutes left in this game, that the fouls become a completely different scenario than what we're used to. A fountain being a beast underneath. Cod had back-to-back -back opportunities, couldn't get him, but it's going to go off of Caitlin, and it will be Owl basketball. 527. Munzer Media's production of Moose Basketball brought to you by Maine Athletic Fundraising. You're going to need to raise money. You're a group or an organization looking to raise some money. Maine Athletic Fundraising. They'll do all the work for you, and then you reap all the benefits. Good step in by Jamie. She's got it. Here comes Plum. And she'll put it home. Jamie Plummer! Flashed into the passing lane with the interception. Took the rest of the way, cashed it home. Yeah, well, and it's nice to see a UMA team that doesn't sit back, sit back, and let another team crawl in here without putting it to them towards the end here. What they're doing, they've really turned it on after Coach Laney took that time out, kind yes. of sensed that happening in a, in a way, and really kind of want to nip that in the bug uh, right away. The fountain. Draw some contact again. <laughs> Caitlin spends a lot of time <laughs> picking herself up off the floor because she's a very aggressive player and got a chance to talk to Caitlin the other day and on the game. And all she could do was praise her teammates. And certainly, as Nate has told you, and we've told you here, very close knit. Because when there's only seven of you, right? It's uh, you've got to you've got to depend on your teammates and. And know that uh, they're going to push you and all that, and that's what you get. You know, the Owls have a much deeper bench, of course, than the Moose. But, you know, that's the way it's, that's the way it's going to be. I mean, they, they know that, and that's what they have to live with. So we've got a check-in coming here, back into the ball game here. For the Moose will be Emily Carter. She'll take the place of, I think it was Cod went out. Boyce goes. She got cut off, dished it underneath, but LaFountain's got it. <laughs> got it down on the floor. <laughs> that was a funny pass. Comes Emily back outside. Jamie launches up the three. No, it won't go. Rebounds pulled down there by Dickerson. Four minutes left, 58-41. Owls made a run. They get it down, I think, to 10, Nate. is as close as they go. Yeah, you're right. Couldn't get under that double-digit mark. Holtham put it up. We said she's the lead scorer. They feisty up. Ball's ahead of the pack. Darby's got it. She's going to pull it out and chew some clock. Yeah, nice smart play there by Darby. 20 on the shot clock. So they'll pr probably try to use this shot clock as much as they can. Three fouls. Nice no-look pass to Jamie in a completion. Jamie Boy. Darby with a nice-looking assist there, the no-look pass. and You better keep your head and eyes open when that young lady's got the ball because she'll hit right between the eyes with a pass if you're not careful. Churchill... Bang down a three. Sydney Churchill. Dobby skitters to a stop. Now this is now in Division One basketball. I don't know if if you can go to left. Brittany does. This had never happened in Division One basketball, <laughs> Nate. Never. No. Never because it's not part of their, you know, their their scholarship offer or something like that. They right. they don't chase those balls down. <laughs> <laughs> you play for the love of the game. Rotated around. Ironed up. Amanda Allen with it. 250. Churchill's got a couple of threes, and that's going to be a two-point basket. So Churchill's been very effective. Sydney, high scorer. They look to double, but Moose moved the ball quickly. Shot 
Shot clock's at 12. Dobby goes, jump stops, kicks it back outside. Common with a long-range dedication and dials it up. Well, there's a three-point shot that time, and that was a long-range three. 63-46. Churchill has been very good this quarter. Sydney's got it done from the outside on drives. She's got a little bit of everything in her game. So she's played really, really well here for the Owls. She'll finish the conventional three-point play. She's got a couple of long-range three-point plays. And let's see, did that get double-touched? Let's see. I think it's going to be blue ball, though. Maybe do a little conference call here. Here we take a look at it. Right here's the inbound about to come in. So we'll take a look at it here. Off the see. foot. It looked like it was off blue, off the foot of blue. UMA ball. Good, good job there by the officials. Yeah. Yeah, a little conference call. Sindel Cludio head up the next crew for the Patriots game. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice, huh? Yeah. Instead of all those Denver guys. Yeah. They picked up the Denver Bronco <laughs> game gear after the game, I think, the last night. <laughs> 1 32 left. That's the end of that editorial comment. But, uh, So good time out by Coach Laney there, Nate. Boy, Churchill was really heated up. Boy, hasn't she had a nice game, huh? You got to really, really, really give it up for Sydney Churchill. Yeah, every time you think that yeah. that nail in the coffin's coming, yeah. she hits a three. Pretty finish for Emily Carter. As Emily knew she was going to get banged down, but she finished anyway. And yeah, what was really impressive there is catching the pass initially was deep under the basket. She was able to catch it, make a dribble out, and give herself a shot. Get the contact and put it in. Nice job. Yeah, they they found Churchill, but so didn't the Moose. Because they know she's been hot. Comes Dobby. They get people ahead of the pack. And Clark will finish it. So there's that pressure on the ball that Dobby just handles. And, you know, when she gets the ball, you don't have to come help it. Just run to the basket. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Give her space to work really exactly. is what you have to do. Yeah. Because she can dribble, she can handle with both hands, and she can make long passes on the run. She's really nice part of her game. Yeah, Lindsay, back-to-back -back baskets. So the Moose, they're going to improve. This is a non-league game, so they're going to go to 9-3 and three overall. They'll remain 4-0 oh in the league. Hulls will drop to 0-5 oh on the season, but they just didn't get off to a great start. But then they, they played the Moose pretty even there, and... Churchill with the big game for the University of Maine. Prescott, and as we've seen, out of the University of Maine, good balanced scoring attack again. So that will do it. The final score here from the Augusta Civic Center in the first game of our doubleheader. The Moose 69, the Owls of Prescott 52. So that will do it from here. Stay with us. We'll have the men's game coming up next. You are watching Moose Basketball on MunsonMediaSports.com.